There we go. Once it goes, then we can start. And for all of you who are new to this, I, I really encourage you to ask lots of questions. Um, it's the only way we're going to learn. So, so maybe as a bit of background, and thank you for starting the recording, Kasper. Um, this is the discussion of ICET Robotics M3. Um, and so we're assuming you've done M1 and M2. And, um, and so where M1 was just building the basic chassis and doing the basic programming, and M2 then took it a level up to say, how do we do sensors? How do we do gearing? How do we do power detachments? Um, M3 was created out of a need to say, how do we pull this all together to ensure that teams build robots that can actually compete strategically in a competition? And so when we started the virtual gear competition, which is 10 years ago already, um, it had a slightly different format. And so the virtual gear competition was actually between German team, German teams in Germany, teams in Texas, and teams in South Africa. And so um, the kind of the research behind it was to how do we get teams to compete where they are um, without having to travel? And so making it um, accessible to as many teams as possible. So I'm very excited that you're participating. Um, but also then um, to say, um, how can we provide access to all robotics teams. Now, um, this, this competition is about um, a training environment. So everything we're doing has got some teaching value in it. And so I really encourage you to document that, to journal that as you go along and say, how can we then, um, how can we encourage our learners, but we need to kind of keep record of their learning. All right. This is more about learning than it is about competing. So the cool thing is there are three competitions. So there's an April competition, there's a June competition, there's a December competition. So if teams can compete, if they can, all three times um, to improve their, their score, that would be amazing. All right. And so that's where we are. So I'm going to give you a general introduction to the virtual gear competition. And then we've got four units. And the first one is about how do we... Uh, prepare for the competition? How do we go about unpacking the challenge and putting it into something that you've got the challenge on the one side, and you've got the robots and the programming on the other side. And so how do we link that together? And then how do we move forward? All right. So I'm going to go into presentation mode and Casper's going to stay in the um, in the lobby to admit all these lovely people who are joining us. And um, please keep your questions um, kind of noted as we go along. All right. So this is, I'm just going to give you an overview of, of M3. And if you have any questions, you want welcome to ask as well. All right. So um, kind of welcome to ICET Robotics. And the, really the focus is about the engineering, the fundamentals of the engineering, the principles of the program, and then these development of 21st century skills. And we've done M1, which is the basics to building and programming. And, and if you haven't been part of that journey, um, take heart, we're going to do M1 and M2 again in, in April. And then M2 was about how do we use sensors and gears and, and power attachments? How do we use that together then um, to create better robots? And so now this is M3 where we talk about strategy, risks, constraints, and how do we present what our learners have learned? Okay. Um, so for now, uh, with the robotics kit we're using, it's kind of, we're busy with the EV3 spike prime um, kind of crossover, but both are, are, are really valuable. And the NXT um, is still a kit to be reckoned with. Um, you could go virtual, but we have not yet. We're, we're in the process of making the virtual robotics game with virtual robots. For the moment, we have a virtual competition with real robots. Okay. Um, and then we need the laptop with the software on it. And so M1 was about really about building and programming and navigation and passive attachments. M2 was about sensors and gearing and power attachments. And now we're going to move on to M3. Okay. So just if you need some more information, if you're new to all this, um, the ICET Robotics Live, this is an ICET Robotics Live online learning session. And all the recordings um, with intense appreciation to Casper, who manages this plethora of recordings, um, are on our YouTube channel. And it's well monitored. And we are very encouraged to see how many um, uh, what you call them, watch views we get, that's the word, yes. But if there are any questions about the MOOC, you're welcome to join our um, Friday afternoon session at three o'clock. 
and send that, us an email and ask for the link. Um, general questions you can also send to Anzani also on that. And But the content of these sessions we've made available on the UNISA MOOC portal and it's on the M3. And if you don't know how to access that, please join our Friday QA session. All right. Um, there are currently, well, it's, it's kind of, we're in the, in the process. We've got M1, M2 and M3 running. And for, if you don't know about the MOOCs, they're massive open online courses. Uh, you just need to create your own login, get some membership, and then you've got your own joinable, you've got your joinable site. And M4, we're busy constructing. And then in brackets, we've got a, um, a kind of a beta version of robotics and Python, and then of course, robotics and environmental sciences. Hopefully we can get that updated and published in the week, because it was going to be the end of March. Um, then we also have the cyber safety MOOCs, and we have the two DBE MOOCs for the grade R to grade three curriculum. And you're welcome to, to join those two. Whether you're a teacher or not a teacher, it's a really good um, foundation for you. And then again, if you want to join the QA session, you're welcome to join the Q&A session. Right. Um, for those who are interested, there are short learning programs. We've closed for semester one, but semester two, you're welcome. You first do CSROB 1E, which is the components and the pedagogy, and then you go over to the problem solving. And then, of course, the theory, the theory, which, so those are two practicals, and then the theory, you do the fundamentals first, and then how do you go forward into the, um, for the future? And so just a warning that the short learning programs have got a 15 week cycle. There are four assignments and an exam and there's a cost involved and there's online registration. All right. So that is my introduction. And, and now we're going to go on to unit one. All right. So, so now we're on to a game strategy. How do we tackle a competition? And the, the environment we're going to present now is the virtual gear robotics competition. How do you take what the rules are or what is required and how do you change that to formulate then a game strategy? All right. And so there's bits and parts to it um, going on. Um, let me just see where this is. All right. So, so let's just un 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 unpack it. So we are there's parts to, to this, and this is again, I don't know whether you remember that in, and I'm, I think it was unit one, unit two, unit three, unit three of M1. There's kind of a uh, engineering design process. There's always a process, okay? And there's a process to solving this problem. So first of all, we identify the problem. Once we identify the problem, we can start developing a game strategy. But remember, we're gonna come back to it because we've got a game strategy. We say we've got a game strategy because we've identified the problem. Then we start looking at what are the challenges, what are the tasks, what are the risks, what are the constraints, and then we so, um, some of these solutions are not going to work, and then we consider solutions. A solution is never wrong, okay? It's always just maybe a more effective, more efficient solution. And I, I really encourage you to encourage your learners to think and to give their solutions, whether it's right or wrong, actually is irrelevant. What you want to do is you want to develop learners that can give forward solutions without any fear of ridicule, okay? And so that's where we're going with this. Um, and tomorrow we're going to do some testing, debugging and running. Um, and so that is also where you take all the little parts, you test it, test it, test it, then you put two together, you test it and you debug it. To debug it is to take out things that are not working. And then um, kind of the other one is that when you run your robot, you always have this thing about, seconds and score all right so how long does it take if it takes 40 seconds to get 10 points or 10 seconds to get 40 points i think the 10 seconds to get 40 points is kind of strategically a better option so you always are improving your solutions how can we go a little bit faster how can we score a little bit more um, more points um yes okay so um unit four which we're going to do tomorrow afternoon is about technical presentation and at one stage we gave a template and we've actually decided not to do that anymore. So uh, what I'll show you tomorrow is I'll give you a blank um, PowerPoint presentation. It's just a blank PowerPoint presentation. And it encourages the learners to put all their information into this PowerPoint presentation and to zhush it as if it's their own. Um, and then we use that as our engineering notebook. 
What is important though, when we get to tomorrow to the session, is you need to be able to present your solution with confidence, all right? And present all aspects of it, that you know you've got a solution. Okay, and then the small print of this thing is you enter a team into a virtual gear competition, and ta-da, this year we are on the Festival of Friendship. Um, yes, it's time that we make friends, we make peace, not war. Um, so this is a Festival of Friendship, and there is plenty of space for creativity um, in this competition as well. And so I'll share that with you now. All right, so where do you find all this information? So if you go onto the UNISA MOOC portal, and you look up the M3, I said robotics M3, and you go under syllabus, and under syllabus, um, so there are some overview, I'll, I'll upload the PDFs now of this session as well, um, all right? And um, just below it, you get the Virtual Gear Competition Festival of Friends, so that's this year's competition, and there's the four documents. So number one is how to register a team, Number, well, that was the kind of the, the first part. Then you've got the competition rules. Obviously, we must have rules. Um, then the materials and the field setup. And and really, it's about using the pieces that are available in your area. And I'm going to put up the mats on here as well. Um, I say that kind of just with, with caution. So note that there are two mats. Um, two designs. The one is for the grades one, two, and three, and we call that our mini mat. And then grades four upwards um, is our mat. But there are two versions of the mat. So um, if you don't have access to a printed, beautiful, colorful map, you are welcome to stick it down with um, black insulation tape, stick out the outlines, and I'll show you in the document all the details are there. And then, um, so that's the one thing. If you, if you would like a mat, um, there is on their team registrations link, there is an a email that you can email the virtual gear team and they would, um, they can arrange to have a mat printed for you. Obviously, you'll need to pay then for the mat and for the couriering thereof. But you should be, I'm going to put the PDFs of the mats up this afternoon still and then you can use that. All right. And then know that there are two mats. The one is for the grades one, two and three and the other one is for the, yes, for you, for, the, for everybody else. What we have done is we've also got a sample videos option and we I'll show you one video, but we've decided not to show you too much. Um, it's good that you that you experiment with your teams. And so we've got some videos. We'll put it all together in a format and we will upload it hopefully by the end of April. So it gives you some idea. Um, but what we've done is we've left last year's competition. It's a party. We've left it up there. And we've also left gone tubing. So those are the previous two seasons of this competition, which you're welcome to use in your classroom as teaching material, if you'd so wish. All right. So it's there and and it's there. All right. It has been created. Excellent. All right. So where do you start? Well, you register a team. And so we've got three three categories and a mini category. So the mini is what we've introduced this year. The mini uses the, the We Do kits or the Spike, um, Spike Essential kits, all right? And then the local, the local is for primary school teams that have not ever competed in a competition. And then global is any team, uh, high school or primary school but um, that uh, well, if a primary school has competed, they become global, but global is all the high school teams. And then your open category is for no age limit. So you can you any any age from 0 to 125, I think. Um, you can use any robotics kit. You can use any programming language. And so it's open. And we want to see where the innovation is, where is the creativity. So there's an open category and, and it's all there. Um, we really suggest that you read all the documents and maybe between today and tomorrow, if you can read them, then we can answer some questions. Um, then you need to decide what is the, what mat are you going to use? Are you going to print a colorful mat or um, are you just going to stick it down with insulation tape and then get all the elements? And the elements are really like toilet rolls, bottle top lids, um, egg, egg cartons. I'll show you that all now. And then you need to strategize and say, okay, so we've got all these rules um and all these missions to do and how then do we put them in an order and as i talk you'll probably see there's there's some order to that all right um then i would say build just the basic robot like a, a chassis and then start delegating the team so 
U3 build that and um, this attachment, U3 program that. Um, but the important thing is you need to program, test, rebuild, program, test, rebuild. I wanted to put it in the infinite loop, but but you will need to do that. Um, you're not going to get the answer immediately. All right. So, so in preparation for this game strategy, um, what you as the coach need to understand understand is that you are coaching a team um, so you will need to guide them or mentor them or lead them through um, the 21st century skills okay and then I think it's really important that you do not give them or the learners you don't give them the answers but it's important to define the problem what is it that we have to do all right what what so in the requirements what are the missions where do we need to go where does the robot need to start? Where does the robot need to end? Where do these pieces need to start? Where do they need to end? Okay. And then you have to obviously apply some problem solving techniques. Now, uh, um, problem solving techniques can come in all forms. I like lots of pens and pencils and colors and things like that. You can add a bit of drama. If I were the robot, where would I go? Um, but you need to discuss this within the virtual gear challenge. We cannot afford to have learners coming to a competition where it is very obvious that the teachers have done all the work. You are doing your learners an injustice. Please, coaches, do not do the work. Um, time and time and time again, we do judging, and and we we know for sure that these teams have never done anything. All right. Okay. So when we do our problem solving, um, there are different kinds of problem solving okay so some some learners like to solve the big problems some learners like to solve the little problems some need a more practical approach um, wherever you are you need to solve you need to acknowledge everybody's contribution all right so don't just go with the loudest child um, in your class but allow everybody to contribute to the, the problem to solve um, and ask the good questions like who, where, why, where are we going to go? If we go straight here, can we turn left here? Um, and then obviously you need some creativity. And could we do this differently? Is there any way we can do it differently? Because innovation you can use as your learning process, like push them a little bit and say, well, maybe we can do it like this. Just because we need to open the gates, and that's one of the missions, just because we need to open the gates doesn't mean you have to open them like that. All right, we can just flatten them. They're also open. All right. Um, but there needs to be teamwork. So again, when you come to um, judging and you're like, ask oh, the team. Okay, so um, who did the, who did the work? Like, um, oh, he did it. Who programmed? No, he did it. And and who worked out the strategy? No, he did. And and the rest of you? No, we're just here for the support. But it's not okay. It's you've got to have teamwork. Um, and the computational thinking. Remember, we want increments and then iterative, small pieces and another one. And another piece and another one and so there there is where you're developing your skills of your learners it's a process all right so um 2020 was not good for us because by the time we'd started the virtual gear competition we had 95 teams registered and then and then it went silent okay so that gone tubing um yeah it was quite sad because the robots were in all the schools the, they were celebrate. They had started practicing, and then it just went. Shh. In fact, I couldn't find my gone tubing stuff, and then I realized, but I've left it in the class. So, yeah. So then, 2021, uh, we kind of redid um, the gone tubing, um, kind of because the learners had really started it. So we decided, let's let's see whether we can do it in 2020. And then 2022, we decided. Uh, Let's go for a celebration and we had all edible elements and I think some teachers, everything that the robots had to move around was like chocolates and jelly and juices and it was a lot of fun. All right. So we're kind of keeping the keeping the flow and in 2023 we've got this festival of friendship. So what are the what do we have to do? What are the missions? So what does your robot have to do? How must it be built and programmed? And and then for your strategy, you need now to think, okay, so how can this team score optimal points? Um in two minutes and trust me two minutes is 120 seconds doesn't matter how you look at it um but you can you can manipulate your robot score your missions to get the optimal points in two minutes 
I'm not sure what the absolute maximum is. I need to work that out, but maybe. All right. And so you need to have a team strategy. Your, your, and every member of your team needs to be able to um, explain. All right. We first do this. We start here. We go here. And then we do that. And then we reverse back. And then we do this. And then we do that. And then we, why? Because this is otherwise getting in the way and it costs us points. And um, this is too risky. The team must be very sure of their strategy. It's not a hit and run. It's not just, let's see how many how many missions we can do in, in the two minutes. It's not that. It's, it's about being very strategic. Because if you, if you kind of think about it a little bit, you can get more done. All right. Ta-da! So this is our Festival of Friendship. And I'm going to show you now what is given and what is the problem and where are we going and what are some of the solutions options. Remember, there's not only one solution. Um, quite a few solutions. All right, so there's a, um, a document which you're more than welcome to, oh, it's cold, which you're more than welcome to read, um, but read the missions and then sit down with your team and say, okay, so what is it? Sometimes it helps um, if you as the coach kind of just stick out the the, the challenge mat or just, just stick it out with insulation tape so long and then get the little pieces and kind of move them around a little bit of drama and play acting but move the pieces around and say okay so how can we move this how can we move that read between the lines okay um and for those of you watching no let me not, i'll say you tell you now all right so this is the document um the, the one document is the, the materials list, the playing field, and the mission setup. So this is the playing field. Um, you'll, I'll show you now. This is the base, and there's a whole lot of pieces, and there's a whole lot of pieces. And there's your lovely follow the line that you always had. So what's the story is it's a castle, and you're preparing to invite people to the castle for a festival of friendship. Okay. Uh, so the air carton is the bridge which you've got to push over the river so that your friends can come. But before you can push it over, you've got to open this gate. So you've got to open it like that. Okay. Well, you've got to open it, and those are made of toilet rolls. See? And then over here, you've got an egg carton, and you put little, you put um, bottle top lids in, and they, those are the plates. So you're setting the table. Um, the This is a dance floor here, and so you put your dancers out, but the dancers are standing here. And then here you've got guards, and I'm trying to think. I think there were one guard. Uh, okay, I'll, I, oh, there, there, wait, wait, wait. That's the guard, and that's a guard. There's a cannon, which is a toilet roll on a tin of tuna. <laughs> and this is it. And then there's the flagpole. All right. So um, let me show you our version of the colorful, let me show you the colorful version of ours. Um, and then we encourage you, if you want to design, if you want to take this and design your own like green grass and color it in yourself, you're more than welcome. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's a festival, and and we're we're looking for innovation. And so the other thing is, if you want to if you want to plant a whole lot of toilet roll trees all along the side here in your castle, um, you're more than welcome to do that. I did I just I did skip the page. All right. So so here is um, also in the document there is what how you start. So there's the bridge, there's the gate, there, oh, there we go. There's the garden, there's the guard. Um, they start there and they end there. Okay, there's the cannon and the cannon and the flagpole. There's your dance formation here. There's your feast table. And when it's finished, your bridge must be away. Your no, your gate must be away. Your bridge must be over the moat or the river, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. And then you've got to design a flag. All right. So design a flag. Get your team to design a really cool flag. And so this is what the flag. This is our look at that amazing contribution. So this flag. Kind of goes into this flagpole and you've got to stick it you know, put it in all right and um and here are the dancers here are your um, five dancers that have got to go into dance formation but you also um color them in put little faces on them um and your guards are are egg cups not, not egg cups just normal polystyrene cups so put faces on them you can do what you like with them you can stick stick um these when they have march um i don't know you can do anything you like here yeah. Um, this this is your table, and there are your six plates that you need to put onto the dining table. There's your tuna, and there's your toilet roll. You've got to push it over. All right. So, so what is the requirement? Well, the requirement is 
uh, obviously you've got to you've got to do all the missions as much as possible in the two minutes but what about the robot so what about the size well there's a size okay there is a maximum and i think it's 40 centimeters 40 40 40 attachments if you can get multifunctional awesome um sensors there there is room for sensors and you will need to see where you're going to put the sensors then you've got to start programming so the navigating to and from the attachments to hold on to and from and then the sensors what are we what are we using our sensors for and does it contribute meaningfully um going forward all right so then there's a list of requirements and from that you put together so build the first a robot then that's that attached that's um sorted out and then does that robot lend itself to doing all these missions all right so there i looked in the document and there was the raise the flag so that but this isn't any order all right so it's presented as in any order so you've got to put the flag in the flagpole you've got to put the dancers into dance formation you've got to put the cannons for the salute so they're standing upright they've got to go down put the guards from the guard house out to the guard at the at the gate okay you've got to open the gate and extend the bridge and then you've got to set the table so in theory you've got six things to do all right but six things to do in 120 seconds does not mean each one takes 20 seconds uh, it's not going to do it um, and so you will need a little bit of of kind of thinking how are we going to do these tasks um that use the, op the time optimally okay so so here's all my problem solving techniques i do a lot of paper i set you with color um identify the parts where do you need to go to and take them take the thing and mark it you know put color on it and say where are we going to what is the time what's the logic um allow time for brainstorming don't just start and just get on with it but sketch things do some role playing lots of drama talk oh my word let the learners talk but they must also learn to listen all right so if they can talk and listen you've got a winning team there. all right um then the challenge itself you need to collaborate and so rather than just talking and sharing and listening please allocate each part to a group within the team okay and then they must make even if they have a single page they must document the decisions this group has decided they're going to make this attachment to open the gate and push the bridge across. And this team, this group of the team, are going to just flag, put the flag into the flagpole. All right, and keep all these diagrams, keep all these sketches. It makes for an interesting learning experience. All right, I wonder whether I'm gonna show you this video. That's not gonna happen. All right, I'm going to give you another video just now. Um, this was my very first virtual gear um, robotics team. You see, we had cones and we had containers and we had again the plastic and the plastic and the plastic and i'm going to i'll re um, link these videos so we'll link them again and i'll show you them tomorrow but the important thing is here it's all bits and pieces all parts so it's about two standing here and then and then he comes and changes and um so it's working together the robotics mat is only half a first lego league mat because it's about learning rather than distance all right where do you find your information if the MOOC 3 M3 is there, um, there's lots of information there. The competition details are there. There's the link to registers there. The competition missions are explained there. And if you if you read through them tonight, and maybe ask me tomorrow morning or uh, tomorrow session, um, if you're still un unclear, then join the Q&A session, and I'm sure Tamela will be able to help you there. All right. So that is my first first part. But whilst I'm still sharing, I want to see. Um, can, I'm just asking, can you still see this mat? Casper, mm. yes, can, can you see, see now this? the mat, Doctor? Awesome. So so this is this is the mat, the double mat. Okay. And so there's your river. But this is our version of a colored colored in. So this is the mat that we printed. Um, there's your gate. So that's the gate that you open together. There is the air carton that you push across the river. Um, there's the air carton, that's the table. Um, here's the dance floor. And over here are the dancers standing here waiting on the side. And so they need to go all the way to there. This is the base where your robot needs to stand. And oh, there's the flagpole. I was going to say there's something else. The flagpole. All right. But this is our version of it. This is our colored in version of it now, but of imagination. And 
I'm just going to stop sharing a minute and I want to see whether I can share a video with you. So this was a group of learners we had at the Walter Sassoula Science Center and we decided to test it out to see what we needed to modify in the documentation. So maybe let me just, let me just take it back a little bit. And these learners only had one day. Um, so we just built the basic Riley Rover. There you can see is the base. There's the dance floor. There's the bridge with six acre. All right, so here we go. Watch this, watch this video. They tried, and I think that's the important thing about this whole thing, uh, is that learners can try different ideas and um, and see what they can accomplish. That wasn't quite right. The, the, the arm was a bit too low, and it kept hitting the wall. Oh, so there's two smarty boxes that are the wall. So you can't just you can't just go like that. You've actually got to push the bridge across between the two walls. Um, I knew there was something else that I missed. All right. Any questions? Let me just um, let me just pause now and ask: Are there any questions? Anybody wants to ask any questions about the virtual gear competition? Okay. If anybody has a question, please feel free to raise your hand. Or if you and have you, some mic problems, please use the chat area. And you're welcome to share your videos as well. We're looking forward to a whole collection of really cool videos. Anybody? I'm just trying to find the next presentation. There we go. Right. Anybody? Um, can I hear maybe in from the group? Is there anybody that has already participated in a virtual gear competition? Oh, we're all new to this. Anybody? You can just raise your hand if you've competed in, in the virtual gear competition before. No. Okay. All right. We're all new to this, and so it, it gives us a good opportunity to share as much information as possible. Um, especially going forward, you'll see that there's a push, there's a pull, there's a color sensor, there is um, there's a lift, there's a drop. Um, so all the learning is ticked off, and so it'll be a good kind of exercise if your learners can do, if you've, if you've gone through M1 and M2 with them, and then they do the virtual gear competition. Um, yeah. So the, the, the portfolio for the M3 is kind of more of how you, how you observed your learners in, in the application of what they have learned. And so it's not as much as, as a study and learn and, was, and wrote, but it's more an application of saying, how did your teams um, survive in the virtual gear competition? All right. All right. So there's no more questions. I'm just... Cus, there's nothing on the chat, is there? Nothing, Dr. Cus. No, nothing. We've got a very quiet group here today. Maybe it was the public holiday. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to then again share my screen, and I'm going to move over kind of to the next part of it. So we're assuming that you have read all your documentation and you understand what the competition is about. And so, so the next part that we have is really um, the challenge. All right, so identifying the challenge, and I'm going to right. again. So now we're trying to identify the challenge. And so um, number one is you identify the problem. You understand what the problem is, okay? And now you have to start breaking it up, okay? So what is the challenge? What is the difficult part about this? What are the things that the robot has to do? But there's risks. There's always risks. So if you carry the plates to the table, there's a risk that the plates are going to fall off. I mean, not really, but all right. If you move forward and you open the bridge, there's always a chance that you don't travel far enough or you don't push the bridge over the river far enough or that one of your dancers falls over um, on the dance floor. Okay, so there are, you need to consider different solutions and how do you um, almost mitigate the risks? Okay, and then what are the constraints? Well, the constraints is the robot is only so big, okay? And, um, that you can't do anything else about it. Um, and then tomorrow we'll, we'll do some testing and debugging, and hopefully I'll have the, the challenge up and running here next to me, and then I will we'll play around and see how we can best put the robot together. Okay, and then I'll tell you how to present it. All right, so 
again, um, we've identified the problem, we've done the problem solving, and and it's very easy. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, we did it. But but write it down. What define? What is the problem? Um, learners need to write, and they need to understand what is. And then you take the problem and you say, okay, so what are the challenges? Okay, the challenges are you only have one attachment on your robot, or the challenge is you have attachment in the front and on the back. Then make a list of the tasks. All right. So so the task is to open the gate. All right. So to get to the gate, you'd need to move forward. You have to open the one side and then open the other side and then and then push the push the bridge across. Okay, so that's a task. Okay, and it's got lots of steps to it. All right. What are the risks? The risks are you don't get far enough, um, uh, and then the constraints again. All right. So again, and I'm coming back to this now. You are working with a group of learners, probably about five or six learners. They all need to be part of the solution. So they all need to contribute to the problem solving process. Some of them are going to be very logical. Some of them are going to be so intuitive. Some of them are going to have these very creative solutions. And some of them are going to think black and white. You know, very, very objective. Okay. Um, the critical thinking, though, is to ask why. Why must we do it like this? They're not another way of doing it. Okay. Um, and what we found with, with the new um, teams that were, were testing it for us is they had no other option. All right. They'd only learned one way. And so they did it one way. Your learners have been um, exposed to multiple ways of doing it. And so maybe they have different solutions. And it doesn't mean. Oh, and see you on. All right. Somebody's got to um, unmute it. There we go. All right. And then can you do it differently? And so we're looking for creativity. Um, we're looking for different ways of doing it. I know Texas Tech has already done this challenge. And so maybe we can do it differently. Maybe we can think of something. And we've, we're allowing it to, to, to be creative till the end of the year. All right. And teamwork. Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. Please don't do, let the learners do this on their own. It's not going to work. Okay. I'd rather let them come up with multiple solutions. And you know what there is? Let them try one solution and then they enter for the end of April and then they can enter for the end of June and then they can enter for the end of December and then they can improve, use it as a learning opportunity. All right. Okay. So now we've got the problem. We've got the list of missions. The robot must do the following, must get the score. Where are we going? Well, we're starting in base and we're going out. And then what are we doing? Are we going to do first this and then that? Are we going to first do the dancers and then the guards? Or are the guards going to then fall over the dancers? Maybe we leave the dancers and let the guards out first and then the flag and then bring the dancers. And how do we do them in formation? We can't just whoosh, put them on the dance floor because they need to stand in formation. And so for for everything, um, for everything in life, actually, there are two poles. And the one is you just do nothing. You just stand there and watch. And the other one is to try and do everything. Your team solution is somewhere in between that. They cannot do nothing and they cannot do everything. So guide them as best they, as best you can to do something. All right. As best they can. All right. And again, please read the challenge documents. I would almost say you need a printed version of it that the learners can make notes. Let them write and make notes and say this works. This doesn't work. This is our first mission. This is our second mission. Okay, so once we have a problem, then we can have the requirements, then we solve each of the parts, and then we start putting, that was our strategy that we were kind of put in. Again, now we start, uh, the, the best thing is procrastination. I was like, no, 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 no. We need to start, okay? So one of the challenges is we procrastinate. We just don't get to it, and we've got to do it. So build a robot, okay? If it's too big, we make it smaller. If it's too small, you might need to extend it with attachments, maybe, all right? And then start looking at your attachments and thinking, oh, this is actually the same thing. Could we just combine it to get a multifunctional attachment? All right. Um, with sensors, do not attach sensors if you're not going to use them. All right. Sensors are not there to make a robot look pretty. Sensors are definitely not there to add weight to your robot. Remember, that you're adding weight, then you add more, more power required to move. All right. So... Think very carefully before you add sensors that you only add to right. Okay, the navigation color pens. Okay, this is forward, this is back, this is forward, this is back, this is forward, this is back. Okay, maybe make it green out and blue. 
you can only touch the robot in base. So you've got to make sure that your robot comes into base because if you pick it up when it's not in base, you're going to lose points. If you send it out and it doesn't go far enough and you go pick it up again, again, you're going to lose points. All right. So understand what is the navigation required, what are the attachments required, and what are the sensors. And if you've got attachments, how are you going to program it? If you've got sensors, how are you going to program it? And how are you going to use the data from your sensors in your programming? Okay. I think I've said that. All right. Now, the tasks. There can be a long list of tasks. Um, the missions are usually divided up. And, and I think most missions have got multiple tasks. You must just read carefully. All right. So you don't just put the flag in the flagpole. There's a whole lot of little tasks in between there. All right. But if you delegate, if you give each group of learners a way of doing their own little bit to contribute to the greater success, there we go. All right. And team members must discuss. And then they must decide which is the better way of doing it. And then we must put it into an order. And there must be an explicit order. This team can do that. Um, I called myself, call somebody in the team, the COO, and the COO is the chief organizational officer. You've got to keep the order. You've got to go first this, then that, then this, then that, then this. And a good idea is to do a score sheet. I'll show you it now. At the end of every day, whenever you're working, run it, run around. Say the tasks today, we've got, say, two tasks or two missions that we can do. This is our scoring. This is our time. This is our score. And then you kind of collate that and say, this is how we're improving. All right. Otherwise, the teams work from two to five every day. And then you say, okay, so how's your progress? And they say, well, we haven't actually progressed. Well, then you're wasting your time. All right. There needs to be progress. All right. Okay. So there are risks. There are, some of them are very serious. Some of them are less serious, but there's always risks. And um, just for the record, Casper is our risk, risk assessor and and I'm sure he can add a couple of it to this, but but I've given you the, just the five. I don't want to scare you away. But make a risk assessment. Make a list of the risks. All right. So the robot's going to run out of power. I promise you the robot's going to run out of power. Okay. How do we mitigate it? We make sure that the robot is charged before every single practice and every single match run. Okay. Get somebody to be responsible for that. Somebody has it on their list of things to do. All right. Number two. There is a very high risk that the robot is going to be dropped. So, if the robot is carried, never ever walk it in one hand. Always have two hands. And I think on that topic, I need to very blatantly and and in capital letters tell you: no learner carries a laptop on their arm, da 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 da, and walks to the table. Never. Okay, that laptop must stay on the table where the learners are working. You either download it with USB or you download it with Bluetooth, but the laptop does not get picked up. Please, 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 please. I have seen far too many laptops crash to the ground, um, and it's much more expensive than just dropping something. Never, 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 never. When you robot, carry a robot, you carry it with two hands. No running in the class either. No fooling around in the class. The robots, it might, we might have fun, but we don't fool around. Because if you fool around, that's when robots get hurt, and that's not okay. All right. The next thing is, oh, especially the day before a competition, the program gets lost. That sucks. No, we had it here the other day. We had it here. So always, always, always have a, and I, and I did have one here just now, have a flash or a USB or a whatever you want to call it or a backup, whatever you want. But back up yesterday's programs. Always have yesterday's programs separate. Okay. Off. The laptop, please, 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 off the laptop. All right. Um, and I know the teacher wants to take over, but the learners need to take responsibility for this. So appoint somebody. You are responsible to make sure that yesterday's programs are backed up and in your care. And so even if you take a backup of the backup, that's fine. But these are all good habits that you are developing in your learners to understand that there are good ways of doing things, and then there are great ways of doing things. And we want great. We want great teams. Okay. Now, number four is that the missions are misunderstood. Hmm. So, a good thing would be to 
to kind of talk it through and make sure that every member of the team understands the mission as the same. All right. Make sure that everybody understands what. And if you don't know, ask. All right. If you're unsure, please ask. Just ask. And so we'll make sure that all. Yes, there is a little bit of ambiguity, um, but it's not on purpose. It's because we've just set it out. And so wherever we are, we've tried to test it as much as possible. But maybe we don't get it right. Okay. And I just also want to say then that our teams um, have already got an edited version of it because how we speak English in South Africa is not how our American counterparts speak English. So we've already modified that bit. All right. The next risk is that one player does all the programming. And it's so, so, so risky. All right. One, one team member does all the programming. One team member gets sick. And then they don't do anything. And so that's not okay. All right. Get groups of learners to put. So I would almost want to say if you have six learners, three do those missions and then three do that mission, then three do this and then three do that. And then three. Divide it up. Make sure that everybody gets a chance. Everybody gets a chance to build. Everybody gets a chance to program. All right. And write up a risk assessment. Write it up and say, this is our risk assessment. Write these things down. Maybe add, this is only five points, but write them down and say, these are the risks. And this is how we as a team are dealing with these risks. You're going to find a whole lot of risks. Okay. Um, I think the other one is putting wires in the wrong ports, but that's my, that's my little peeve. Okay. Now, the constraints are that the robot is really limited in size. Okay. Even if you want to expand it, it's still got to fit into base. Okay. And the playing field is only so big. You can't go over the sides. Okay. And, and the biggest constraint is only 120 seconds in two minutes. And that is kind of standard. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, uh, the, the robot is only going to get 120 seconds no matter what. Okay. And then, okay. So, again, you need time to talk. You uh, allocate each part within a group. Um, maybe, maybe to start off with, if you're a new team, kind of think, okay, what do we need to do first? Maybe what we need to do first is put the guards on their spots. Put them on their spots. And then when you get that right, you say, okay, we can do that. We can get two guards on their spots, and it takes us, say, 20 seconds. Great. All right. Now what are we going to do? And then maybe say, you do this one, and you do this one. And then, but keep talking. Keep all diagrams. Keep all discussions. Oh, what can go wrong? Well, the biggest thing that can go wrong is that you don't read the documents. Okay. So if you're not reading the documents, then you won't know what the rules are. Okay. And if you don't know what the rules are, you're going to get it wrong. Okay. So read the documents. I, I know some learners don't want to read online, but you can always download it and leave it on the laptops. Let them, let them read. Okay. And then ask them, so what are the, con oh, there's a team missing. What are the constraints and what are the requirements? Let them tell you what are the constraints and what are the requirements. Okay. You can see what they come up with. All right. And then the question that is always, is it all worth it? Okay. So um, in the last 10 years, this is what we've been doing and what we have learned. We've learned that problem solving is definitely a skill that learners need to learn and can learn, but it takes time, okay? As much as it's trial and error, it's about exploring solutions. It is not a hit and run. It is not a random ad hoc, just like, oh, let's just go for it. There, there might be trial and error, that's great, but they need to learn from it, okay? There needs to be a strategy. Every team needs to have a strategy. Probably 80% of all teams competing are going to have the same strategy. They might. But that's not to say that 80% are right and 20% are wrong. It says just that 80% chose this strategy and 20% chose another strategy. Or even if there's one team that has a totally different strategy, we want to hear about it. All right. The risks you need, this, this is a kind of a reality check. Okay. Write them down. Let your team write down the risks. And I'll send you a template. Um, We'll, I'll make it available tomorrow, all right? List the risks and tell me how are you going to avoid them or mitigate them, 
okay? Ah, the smiley face, I say share the tasks. Please, coaches, you do nothing. You do nothing. Do not make this about yourself. It's not. It's about your team. You are the coach. You've got to coach them. You've got to guide them. You've got to guide their thinking, guide their problem solving, guide them and think where they have to do. All right. But that learners in the team need to share the tasks. All right. Um, equally. <laughs> equally. All right. Um, tackling the challenges one by one, listening to the challenges, seeing what it is. And maybe teamwork is also a challenge for you. Then you write down. It's a challenge to get teamwork in this team. All right. You're going to adapt the constraints as you go along. Um, but again, back to the question, is it all worth it? It's 100% worth it. All right. Persevere, be optimistic, be precise. Oh, that's the other one. Be precise. If your team starts this mission at this space, it has to start this mission at this space. All right. And it has to go forward at this. It's not just like, I just put it down and see where it goes. No, 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 no. It's got to be precise. It's an engineering exercise. All right of precision and you've got to practice and you've got to practice and please don't let them just do it the night before because that's not fair to any learners not fair at all all right i'm go i think this is going to work is it not going to work okay all right I'm, i will sh i will show you this video um tomorrow but this is a team that uh, this was all the, the story was about a ship and everything and they needed to clear the debris here and so this team um, you see, this is from the hardware, and this is your margarine container. And they had to clear the debris and and push push luggage, which was plastic containers, and then they have to. So it was a whole story, and this is a really loud video. It's a really cute video. All right. Again, here are some videos uh, we did a. Um, what was oh, this was this was actually celebrate. Um, you can see here's a, a margarine tub. There's the juice that the, needs to move in here, but it's just in. You've got to make sure that it's in base. That's the purpose of this you've got to make sure that your robot starts accurately precisely all right again here there it was it was like setting it up i think it needed to deliver from here it needed to go forward and deliver chocolate bars and luckily delivered the chocolate bars all right but i'll show you the videos i'm going to maybe you can go and have a look also at the videos already on the on this under syllabus all right uh, i'm not really upset with these videos I've started. Oh, and this is my my very first virtual gear team. I actually carried all this material from America, from Tanya, and because um, she was keen to see whether we can do it. And and also, you know, right in the beginning, we used Skype. We didn't have online meetings. We didn't have Teams meetings. Um, we had Skype and we tried it out. And then and then still we had load shedding. So we had to, that's what it was in at night. We had to adapt our uh, competition times the load shedding schedule oh my word we've come so far all right that is what i have to share i'm going to stop sharing and uh i just want to i see there's a hand I'm, I'm i'll come to the hands i just want to show you um the the where am i here i'm going to share i just go through a document with you quickly um <laughs> So this is the this is the the documents that are available, and this is the um, virtual gear uh, festival of friendship. So what it does, it gives you all the details. Let me just hide this here. It gives you all the details here of of that's what the floor map must look like. It gives you um, the field size. It gives you all the measurements um, where you need to put the, all the measurements on millimeters and centimeters, so that we have a similar layout. Um, in terms of measurements, okay, and then it tells you exactly how to stick things down. Um, remember, the dancer needs to be over the dot. So we were having we were having a lot of issues with getting more precision. So you've got you not put the sticker in the center. You're not allowed to see that. Then then the dancer is in in formation, okay. Um, also, you can use um, kind of set, um, color pens to kind of put it out, or you can use those little stickers. Um, how to put it. Um, this is the this is the kind of the normal stuff. So you need a straw, a straw for the flag. You need the PVC couplings. Um, what is that? I think the PVC. I uh, can't remember what that was for. Oh, I think that's the that's the cannons. And then you need toilet rolls, and you need a full tin of tuna. It's got to be heavy. All right. So do not eat the tuna. <laughs> 
and then you need similar to a box of smarties it's kind of that if you don't get smarties and you get something else wherever you are that's also fine it just needs to be guided and you've got plastic cups they don't need to look like that it's any plastic cup you can use a can use um, from plastic land and whatever all right then you need an egg carton with six uh, where six eggs were um, it doesn't have to be that make but I'm sure you can find an egg carton and then a plastic lid so I think most of them were just a handful from my collection then we've got you can you don't have to get the round stickers but you can also draw them you know if you want to and there's little ones and big ones so that's what you need to set up oh there's our flag Ta -da! and and there's the couplings you need to stick together and there's the bridge and the and the table and that's oh so just um for the for the for the um the gate that goes open and close we've taken the three toilet rolls and we've put them together with paper clips all right it's just how we did it if you want to if you want to decorate it extra with with um, duct tape or i don't know whatever you want to decorate it you are you're more than welcome you're of course more than welcome all right um so again as i said in the previous presentation this is how the games elements must be set up when you start okay so this is the grand hall this is the base this is the quarters um there's the bridge there's the gate there's a guard post and a guard post there's a cannon up there and a cannon up there the flagpole and the feast table over there okay and when you end that's what it's going to look like so so that bridge has got to be moved over there's your bridge walls must still be in place your gates have got to be pushed aside your guards from the guard quarters must be in their positions your cannons must be ready down so that the 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 toilet control on top of the tuna must be down um, without rolling off um, your feast table you've got to put your plates onto the feast table your flagpole uh, your flag has got to be in your flagpole your dancers have got to be here in formation one three and one and your robot has got a starting base for all missions i don't think we need to say where the robot must end after two minutes Okay, let's just check those rules all right so this is kind of what it look, let me just make it a little bit smaller so you can all see so this is kind of what it looks like um so this is the this is the non-version of it the the straightforward you can just do it on the back and practice version of it if you'd like a colorful version you're more than welcome but that's kind of the the measurements are important all right sure all right i think i have spoken more than enough and me stop sharing and let me let me just hear your thoughts um your questions and and let's have a discussion about it i'm really ex excited about having a discussion all right casper is there anything in the chat yes of course we have a hand oh, we have a hand okay yes and maybe on it So Lile, you want to unmute yourself? Mazibuka. So Lile Mazibuka, do you want to unmute? Maybe while we maybe while we wait, if there's any other questions, please please feel free to either raise your hand or use the chat area. Anybody got any questions? Or shall I give you tonight to go and read through the documents? Um, I'll upload the two um, map designs that we have for the mini and for the, the larger, for the grade, grade fours upwards. Anybody? Kasper, I think we're done then. If there are no questions, if everybody is, is okay, Everybody understands what we have to do. Maybe go and read the read the the, the documents. I'll upload the the mat um, details, and then we can and, and we can have a, maybe a rich discussion tomorrow. All right. Okay. Last chance. Anybody want to ask any questions about the virtual gear robotics competition? It's online. It's free. You can do it at your school, and we'd love to have you joining us. All right. Uh, Dr. Huis. Yes. Um, Hi. Q and. Hi, Q and. How are you doing? 
Um, fun and you. Good, excellent, excellent. Now, um, I've been I've been away for a while. The the athletics and the rugby is taking up a lot of my time, but okay. Um, I received everything, and I I bought a new kit as well. Um, oh. so I have two kids at a school now. Okay. So I can um I'm thinking about inviting uh the neighboring school for a celebration event. But I, I remember I, I thought the um the date for that um what was it the the, the that we must do the re registrations. Okay. The MOUs. I thought it was yes. the 31 of March and I see now it's 28th of February. So um <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit late. Is it still fine if I um yes. do that now Just in the following week? Yes. yes. Um I also also wanna make sure that weeks um I'm from Crime Park that we yes. still um we count as a grant challenge team. So um are we I'm not sure you want to, I think I think send me an email with all your details and then we can discuss it. Yes. Okay, makes sense. All right. Then we make. Okay, we thanks. Make thanks right. so much. So one day, hopefully, everybody's going to say, "Oh, we can't get to robotics and soccer because the robotics has taken over." Yeah, exactly. But I'm. Uh, yes. Yes, we're getting there. <laughs> Excellent. I live in anticipation. Okay. Uh, but thanks. Uh, thanks for the, the PowerPoint. All right, so um, I just see my do. Uh, you want the the link? Um, my do. We're going to put all four. Well, today's two sessions and tomorrow's two sessions. Um, Cusper is going to put it on our YouTube channel, and then you can watch them there as well. All right. Okay. And then I will give the updated PowerPoint presentations. I'll put those updated ones also on the weekend. I'll put them all up on the. Um, on the MOOC, the, the M3 site. All right. Yes, I but will, in the meantime, as soon as possible, I'll, I'll just have to, I'm just waiting for the recordings for the previous sessions before I can upload, but okay. I will uh, upload as fast as possible. Okay. Thanks, Casper. Absolutely. All right, so your homework for today is to go and re download some of those documents and read them through, and let's see how many teams we can enter for the competition. Uh, going to be an exciting competition and you as the coaches are going to coach your teams you're not going to do and let's see what we can do all right thank you to my team thank you Casper, for being here if you can just stop